Thank you, everybody. It's great to be here. So if your brain is like the rest of humanity's brains, if it operates in the same way, which it probably does, it's really busy right now, processing the cues and clues that I've given you about who I am. So I've given you a little bit here, right? You can see my name. Maybe you're inferring my nationality from that. I have a pretty good title, director, user experience research. I work at LinkedIn. That's actually not up there, but that's a little bit more data for you to process who I am and what I'm all about. There's a lot of, I can put together an outfit, right? <laughs> so I've given you some uh, material to work with to figure out who I am, but that's just what's obvious. What I want to talk to you to, about today is something that's hidden, something that you might not know from me, although my dress gives it a little bit away. Um, a huge deadhead. That is to say, I'm a fan of the band The Grateful Dead. Um, I've been to over 100 shows. Um, I actually dropped out of college to go follow The Grateful Dead around <laughs> back in the 80s, the late 80s. Um, I have about 6,000 Grateful Dead songs on my iPhone, and that's just really a drop in the bucket. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this band. I still follow them around. Uh, my boyfriend, Peter, who's in that picture, and I, we um, are known to go all around the world to follow the music of the Grateful Dead. Now, that's not something that I shared with my colleagues um, until fairly recently. It was something I really kept hidden, and that was, um, that was a mistake. So what I want to do today is tell you a little bit about, as I shared that um, with my colleagues and thought about the relationship between the work that I do and my being a deadhead, um, there's a lot of similarities between these two things, between being a user experience researcher and a leader in the field and being a deadhead, believe it or not. So if you are a deadhead, raise your hand if you are. Okay, nobody. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> that gives me a good, good wh where to start here. Okay. Um, okay, so my objective is to convert you to deadheads today on the grounds that I think it will actually make you a better research professional. So who are the Grateful Dead? Um, really briefly, because <laughs> how could you possibly encapsulate the cultural phenomena that is the Grateful Dead? But it's a band that um, started in the 60s. Um, they have a quasi-spiritual leader in Jerry Garcia. The music itself is kind of a mutant hybrid of bluegrass, blues, R&B, rock, folk, jazz, and even a little bit of classical influence. All mushed up in the 60s, add psychedelics, and um, you get the Grateful Dead. They came to really epitomize the psychedelic era, um, and in fact took that era forward decades into the future, still relevant today. Um, and they also created their own genre of music, the jam band, which is a thing now. They have their own, the Grateful Dead and jam bands have their own channels on Sirius XM, which is pretty amazing. Um, but they are still relevant today, even though Jerry Garcia died over 20 years ago. Um, the, the latest version of The Grateful Dead is called Dead and & Company, and they're touring today. Over a half a million people last summer alone went to see Grateful Dead shows in some of the largest um, stadium venues around the country. So we're still all about it. Um, so how did I come to be such a big deadhead? Um, by the way, all the quotes are in this, or pretty much all of them in the presentation are lyrics of Grateful Dead songs that I peppered in there, but how did, how did I, Julian Revices, come to be such a big deadhead? Um, this is a picture of me in the late 80s um, with my mom. When I was in high school, and in, um, actually even a little bit before high school and in high school, I just was really obsessed with 60s music. The Beatles, uh, this was the early 80s, the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix. This is a true story. My parents had like those big speakers, you know, those big old, most of you probably don't know, but <laughs> that we used to have these big speakers and my parents would be at work. I would come home. I would move them until they were facing each other. I would lay down in between them and blast Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced, at the loudest possible volume. This is me in high school. Yeah. So I was really into the 60s. There was just a vibe about it, the... The, um, the independence, the freedom, the creativity, um, the originality, all those things really um, resonated with me. It was kind of um, a little edgy, a little racy, a little um, rebellious, but also super, super positive. I just really loved the hippie vibe. But I really hadn't heard much about the dead till I got to college. Um, I started my college career out on the East Coast with a lot of people who went to prep school. I did not go to prep school, but um, apparently, the Grateful Dead is a big thing in prep school on the East Coast. So um, I quickly got exposed to the music and um, 
very, a couple months after starting college, went to my first dead show on November 11th, 1985. It was in New Jersey at the Meadowlands, a huge arena. I didn't have a ticket, but I kind of snuck in, which is kind of part of the ethos. <laughs> you get scrappy. Um, and from that moment on, just, you know, connected with the music and the scene so intensely, that was just it. I was hooked for life. And in fact, you know, grew my hair from this picture. My God, I had long hair, patchouli, Birkenstocks, tapestries everywhere, like the whole deal. I was completely all in. I even made my dad lend me money to get a VW van, like the one you saw in the prior picture. So yeah, I've always, since an, from an early age, I really liked things that were weird. I love this quote from Jerry Garcia. Um, there's a great movie that just came out, if you're interested in learning more about The Grateful Dead, which I'm sure you are, right? Um, it's called The Long Strange Trip. It's a four hour long documentary, but Jerry is quoted, he, he's interviewed, and this is one of the quotes that he comes up with. He says when he was nine years old, he went to see the movie Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. And at that moment, he realized there's some really weird stuff in the world, and I kind of want to be involved with that. Um, and that really resonates with me. I think things that are weird are interesting. And I think as researchers, that should be core to each one of us. Fundamentally, everything should be strange, interesting, fascinating, and weird. That serves us really, really well. I've studied a lot of things, ironing, toilet paper, financial services, tech, social networking at LinkedIn. Everything is weird and fascinating to me. And I think that's really at the core of every good researcher. When everything is weird, everything is interesting. So this is what, this quote here, this lyric is what being a deadhead is all about. Once in a while you can get shown the light in the strangest of places if you look at it right. This is also exactly what it's about to be a researcher. You, we are on a quest for enlightenment as researchers. I don't care if you're qualitative or quantitative, this is what we're doing. We're looking for that light, and we'll look anywhere for it, right? Researchers and deadheads are alike in a lot of ways. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how we're alike in what we do and how we are alike in how we do it. Are you guys ready to take a trip with me? All right. So if you get confused, listen to the music play. I love this idea that listening can eliminate confusion. What we do is listen. And when I say we, I mean researchers and I mean deadheads. This picture is actually a picture of one of my fraternity, I, I belong to this co-ed fraternity, we were all about the Grateful Dead, but this is his case of tapes from the 80s. Every one of these tapes is a, show, is a whole Grateful Dead show. Um, the way it worked is at any show, anybody could tape the show and then we would exchange tapes and share them, engage in a vast listening experiment with each other. The band totally was okay with that. It was free music, music was free, the experience was free for everybody. The other thing about the Grateful Dead's music that I want you to know is that it's complicated. I think it gets a rap of being, oh, it's just hippie music and they're just noodling around. It's very, very complicated music. They give the audience credit for intelligence and assume that the people listening are gonna be paying really, really close attention, and we are. I mean, these tapes, we would just sit around for hours and listen to them and just dissect them and um, find the meaning in them. I think that Listening is a core skill for researchers as well. The other thing that we do in common is we document things. Um, we are, deadheads and researchers are obsessive chroniclers of experience, looking for patterns, looking for meaning. The Grateful Dead between 1965 and 1995 played 2,323 shows. Each one of them was a different show. And each one of those shows, every note of music is a data point that was obsessively chronicled, documented, um, studied, um, recorded, analyzed, discussed. Um, and that's something, I mean, what do researchers talk about more than documentation? I don't know. So researchers and deadheads share that at the core, listening and documenting things. Look no further than this example to see the extent to which deadheads will go. This is, the x-axis is years, the y-axis is songs, 
Every little dot is every single time a song was ever played over the years. Researchers among us, does this look familiar? <laughs> does it look like a scatter chart? Yeah, um, it's pretty funny. So that's the what. What about the how? How we work is similar too, as researchers and as deadheads. We're experimental. I will not forgive you if you will not take the chance. It's one of my favorite lyrics. We, as researchers and deadheads, are living in the exploding moment. The music is free, it's chaotic, it's experimental, it's unpredictable. As such, it's not perfect. It can reach soaring heights, but it's one of the funny things about dead music is it's, they'll miss a lyric. They'll miss a, a verse completely or switch verses around. It's okay with the audience. We actually love that. Perfection is not the objective. The objective is to try. The objective is to put yourself out there, get something new out into the world. And this, particularly for user experience research and design, is really, really important. It's something we really, really share with the Grateful Dead and their ethos of how they create music. Researchers and deadheads alike know that you can't make progress. Nothing will ever change unless you put yourself out there, take a risk, make a mistake, get forgiven by the people around you who support you, and keep on pressing on. How we do it is together. One of the, actually I should have mentioned, for the LinkedIn user research team, one of our core values is being to be experimental. That's what unites us as a group. We, we have to operate with rigor, but we must also be experimental. And another one is collaboration. How the Grateful Dead is in the world and how researchers are in the world is just super, super collaborative. So these things reinforce each other as well. Deadheads are full participants in every show. It's Phil Lesh in, in this documentary I referenced earlier said, um, he actually believes he's received messages from the audience in the form of melodies or song ideas or lyrics. So he's very much in a state of communal exchange and energy exchange with the audience. And that goes both ways. Every person who's ever seen a dead show, or maybe not every person who's ever seen a dead show, but every deadhead believes that they had a personal connection with Jerry Garcia. My first show was at the Meadowlands. I've seen them at Madison Square Garden, but it doesn't matter. Every single show I was like, Jerry sees me. <laughs> Jerry understands that I'm here and it's important to him that I'm here. Um, in fact, my, my boyfriend, his first show was 1227-79. And to this day, he thinks it's true that he was calling out China Cat Sunflower, which is one of the songs that the dead plays. And he swears that Jerry looked right at him and then went right into the song. <laughs> so one of his proudest moments. Um, but that's how, you know, as researchers, whether we're on the client side um, or agency side, that's how we want our stakeholders and clients to feel, that they're the most important person, that we're having an exchange, um, that that exchange is meaningful. Collaboration is critical. How we do it is also fun. The LinkedIn user research team is known for one phrase, and that is, if it can't be fun, what is the point? Now, a Grateful Dead show is obviously a lot of fun. Super immersive, energizing, creative, surprising. You never know what's gonna happen when you get in there. It's about three hours of chaos. Now, research is a different kind of fun, <laughs> but we also want it to be fun. We definitely want it to be some of those things. Immersive, energizing, creative, surprising. Um, deadheads are masters of having fun, and researchers have to be masters at creating fun in order to be really effective. So, our past and our passion equal our future. Why do we want to hide that from each other? Something was hidden from each of you today, before you got to know me a little bit better. And I was hiding something from my colleagues for quite some time, which was not good. And really, by in doing so, I was hiding something from myself. Each one of us has experiences that are hidden within us that we can reveal and create better ex relationships with the people that we work with, bring a more authentic perspective to our teams, and have more fun. The Long Strange Trip movie that I mentioned earlier, Bill Kreutzmann, who's one of the original drummers of The Grateful Dead, um, he was reflecting on a song that he and Bob the guitarist wrote called The Other One in the early 60s. And it had a very innovative beat. It was a six beat on top of a four beat. And he said he realized when they created that song that the 
only limit for what this band could accomplish was their imagination. And when he said that, I just stopped in my tracks because that's something that I actually say to my team all the time. I think that's absolutely true of LinkedIn um, and the platform that we have, um, the scale that we work at, when we know what we're doing, which is listening and documenting, chronicling user experiences and how we're doing it, which is experimental, collaborative, and fun, there is no limit to what we can accomplish together. So I'll leave you with this one question. Will you come with me? Where do I want you to go? Well, I've written an article on LinkedIn. It's called The Obvious Was Hidden, and I would love to invite you to have a conversation with me about something that's hidden inside of you that you want to reveal. You could, it could be that you work on cars, or you run marathons, or you're a kayak, or you're a knitter, um, or you like to cook. Something about you fundamentally informs the way that you show up at work, the way that you do research, the way that you lead teams, and I would love to talk to you about that. I'd love to find out what that is. So also part of being um, a Grateful Dead fan, as you can imagine, is being really tuned in with gratitude. So with that spirit of gratitude, I want to thank you all for having me here today. Thanks.